What's up everybody, it's AJ with eTrailer.com. Today we're gonna to be checking out the bed slide contractor. It's gonna be a sliding bed tray for your truck. It's gonna be a great option if, as you can see, we have a camper shell here, maybe you have a tonneau cover, or maybe you just have hard time accessing stuff when it's pushed up to the front of your bed. This is gonna prevent us from grabbing anything and unloading or loading from the side, but we can slide this out now and this heavy generator, I don't have to climb all the way in there and go to the back to wheel it out and lift it out. It actually comes to us when we pull the tray out. Let's check it out. Right away, it's a sliding bed tray. Let's get to it and slide it in. I'm gonna show you different points. It stops automatically. At. That way you can use this part as like a workbench. If you don't need it out this far, you don't have to bring it out this far every time. It does have stoppers. It's gonna pull on the handle right here. I'll show you there. Like that. You just slide it in. It stops right there. That's one position. That way, maybe you don't need to get fully to the back. You just need to get right here or just something right here. You can do that. We'll go in a little bit more. Right there is another position. Again, you won't be able to get to the stuff in the far back, but if it's loaded all the way out to here, you can still grab this stuff easily here. And then the final position is gonna go right there. So this is all the way pushed back. And let me shut the tailgate to show you how much room there still is. Looking there, there's plenty of room between the tailgate and the handle. So you don't have to worry about those two touching or scratch anything up. Something else I want to show you is that how it slopes up. So let's fully extend it to see that. So then this position, you can kind of see how it slopes upwards. Now this can handle up to 1,500 pounds. So if you had a bunch of that weight here on the back, when it brings the truck down, this would still be level and that way it's not sagging down. Now because it can handle up to 1,500 pounds, you want to make sure it's strong enough to do that. And the construction is, you got the steel construction on the sides and the frame on the bottom. And then you have the composite tacking here on the top, which is a nice textured finish. It's kind of like a spray and bed liner that has a little bit of texture just to help you grip on those items in the back here so they won't slide around as easily if it was just a smooth surface. Now along the sides, you still have railings too. Those are gonna help you tie down things and just keep things from falling off there. So if this is pushed in there, you take a turn, you don't have to worry about everything sliding off the edge and falling in between the bed slide and the wall. And then also over here, you have tie down points you can just loosen and slide up and down the track wherever you need them. So it keeps everything nice and tight here in the bed slide. One of the benefits of the bed slide is all the accessories you can get with it. So you don't only just have this, but if you want to kind of section things off, you can get a divider that'll attach the rails and then you can divide your work stuff from whatever the extra stuff is. Maybe you're just running the store, you want to throw some stuff in the back. You can keep that all up here. Plus that divider will just shove everything up there. You don't have to worry about it sliding around at all on you when you're driving. And you can also get bins that attach to the side. That'll be for more loose things like hardware or hand tools that don't really have a home. You can set them in those compartments on the side. You put those in there just to help to organize that loose stuff that we all end up just throwing in the back of our trucks anyway. Let's get a better idea how much space you are working with here. I'll go ahead and measure it out. So from side to side, it's gonna be 45 and a half inches there. Then from front to back, it's gonna be 69 and a quarter inches long. And then let's get the height of the rail. It's gonna be a little bit right there at five inches. Now with it back into place, let's see how much room you have inside the bed of your truck. I'm gonna go front to back. I gotta hook it on the very end there. When we come out to the edge of the handle, it's gonna be 75 inches. And if we go from side to side, it's going to be 48 inches. And now let's measure the height. We're going to go from the higher part of the bed to the top of the deck. And it looks like it's right there at four and a half inches. And that's important just because if you have a tonneau cover or something lower than this camper shell, you want to know that before you start loading tubs of stuff in there or taller items like a generator and be able to still close that tonneau cover. When you're looking at sliding bed trays, you do have a couple options out there. One of the other ones is going to be Cargo Glide. And either one of those you go with, though, they're going to have different weight capacities. So you can get the one that's best for you and how you're going to use it. Other than that, though, the difference is there's going to be far more accessories for the bed slide here. And that's going to be those bins I talked about or the divider. There's a lot of those accessories. That way you can customize this and let it work the way you want it to work. Or just organize it the way you want to organize it. Another one is how much of it slides out. So you're gonna get 75% of the tray slid out here on this one. And then the cargo glide, it's gonna come out 100%. But the difference there is this one 
has that upslope we talked about, so it kind of goes up when, that way when you weigh this down, it'll still be level. The other one does not. The cargo glide comes out straight here, so if you weighed it down, it wouldn't be level if you put a lot of the weight here at the end. Insulation is gonna be pretty much the same for both of the different sliding bed trays. You're gonna have to drill holes in the bed for both of them. It's not that bad, but I think the bed slide has an advantage just because it has a better tool that it comes with for the rib nuts. It's gonna be a more solid tool to use that makes it easier to do that part because that part is a little difficult. But again, just like drilling the holes, it's not that bad. Just follow along with us and you'll see how to do it. First up, we're gonna come here to the ends. I'm gonna unscrew this with an Allen key and just loosen that screw that's down in there. Now we can remove the end and slide in our pieces. Just like that. And you're gonna wanna do it with the curved end facing down. That way it slides in there like this. I'm just gonna put two of those in there and then we'll replace the end here. Coming to this end, I went ahead and removed the end cap just like before. We're gonna put these blocks in, again, with the curved side down, slide them along the track. We're gonna put five of them in. Just like this. And replace the cap. Now we're gonna line up our corner bracket. What we're gonna do is you can just slide those blocks pretty easily along the track. You're gonna wanna line those up with the holes on the bottom of this bracket. So let's set it in place and see. Like we can need to push this one in just a little bit more. Match up that hole. Looks like we need to come over right there. And I can There we go. The holes are aligned there. And now we can install our screws. And then I'll come back and tighten it down the rest of the way with the Allen wrench. So after we got this corner installed, we're gonna stop there. We're not gonna install the other corner just yet. You gotta slide this rail in first. So what we're gonna do is just like on the sides, we're gonna slide one of those plastic pieces in with the curved side down and then slide this into the corner bracket. You wanna line up those holes there. Make sure the rail is gonna to touch the end here so I don't need to slide this out just a little bit. I can move it into place there. All right, with that in place, and come back with this bolt and thread it in. And then come back with a ratchet and tighten it down. After installing the first corner and the head rail, we went over to the other side and did the same thing. Now we're coming back here to the on the side and we're gonna use the existing plates we put in there. So I kinda got it lined up what we're gonna do. These are gonna be for the D-rings here on the side. I'm gonna screw those in. And the two in the middle here are gonna be for the side bracket for the side rails. So what we're gonna do is just set that in place like we did before. Line up those holes. Let's go ahead and line up this one first. Get it started. Once I got that hand started, I can move it on its own and line up that one. I'll come back and loosely install this. You don't want to tighten this all the way just yet, but I'm just going to get them a little bit tighter. Now we'll come back with the D-rings and slowly screw those in. And we decided to put one on each side of that side bracket. We're going to leave those loose too so we can move them back and forth for now. Now we can install the upper rail. We're gonna put these blocks in real quick before we do that. Same as we've done all the time. Curved end down. With those slid in. Now you can see that I just slid those in on the open side. We want that open side to go into the bracket. So slide that into place there. Then I can slide our side bracket down. I want at least six inches of space from the bracket to the end for that nice clean look. So I'll leave this loose and come back here in a second. I'm gonna add the bolts in here to the plastic pieces we slid in. 
Now I left that loose in the corner bracket just to keep it in place. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm just gonna line up this side bracket with the plastic that we put in there and get that hand tightened. With everything in place where we want it, we can go back and tighten everything down and then we're gonna repeat this whole process on the other side. Now we're ready to lift up the bed slide and put it in a place. Now you're gonna need some extra set of hands because it's pretty heavy, especially towards the back. And when you go to set it in here, make sure you center it. We put a piece of cardboard here so it doesn't scratch up the bed as we're lining it up. And you want it an inch and a half from the front of the bed there. So the extra set of hands, you're gonna lift it, set it in place. This is where the cardboard comes in handy because we're gonna slide it towards the front. So we finally got it right in the bed of the truck. Took a little bit of maneuvering back and forth. We measured from the wheel wells just to make sure that was the same spacing on each side. Up front is where we had the trouble of lining that up. So what we've discovered is if we got two pieces of wood and put it there and they measured out an inch and a half, if we set that at the front of the truck bed and then push it up against it, that was far easier than trying to line up each corner because we kept going back and forth and we're having issues with that. So we just put those wood up there push it up against there. Now it's even on both sides and it's set in place. It's gonna reach up and slide this back to the first locking position. Right there, and then go up and start drilling our holes. Now we're ready to check out and see where we're gonna drill our holes. Now we've slid it out just to expose those holes we can use. And each one has three spots. You can see there, it's gonna be the best one that has the most coverage on it and the part that it goes up on your bed. So not this part that makes an indention. This would not be a good one to pick. So we're not gonna go with the middle one. This one has a little bit here on the raised side. This one has the most. So this is the one we're gonna go with. So what we do is we're gonna take our half inch drill bit. That's the one we're gonna draw our last hole out with. So I'm just gonna kind of push down on there. Use that tip to make a point in the bed just so I can see where it's gonna be. Now that I've made that mark, I'm gonna come back with the center punch, put it in that same spot, and just push down. It's gonna make an even more of a hole so I can start my pilot hole. And with that first pilot hole, we're gonna repeat that on the other holes. We're gonna come back here, now we've got the pilot hole, and use our half inch bit to go ahead and widen that up. One thing you wanna make sure you get is the right kit for your truck. Most of the insulation is gonna be the exact same with all the bed slide, except if you have aluminum bed. You're gonna to wanna to get the aluminum bed kit because it has specific hardware like aluminum rib nuts that are gonna to have to go in the furthermost holes, and then there's gonna have nylon sleeves for the back holes and even plates that go underneath. So just make sure you get the right kit for the right truck. With a hole enlarged, we can drop in our rib nut. I'm just gonna apply a little bit of pressure with my thumb. I'm gonna go into place there. Now we can get it to expand and how we're gonna do that is use this bolt and rib nut tool. Now something we found that was helpful because as you go to tighten this down, you're gonna drop this through, use a wrench and another tool. And what that's gonna do is that bolt's gonna make the rib nut expand down there and it kind of fights you a little bit, but we found if you added a little bit of grease, it makes it way easier. So I'm just gonna dab the shop tile on there, just get a little bit of it, put it on the bolt itself, and then a little bit on the tool here so that it can not get stuck on that bolt. So just put a little bit there, drop that through, and now we're just going to tighten a little bit of it to get it started. That way I won't have to hold it up. We're gonna take our ratcheting wrench, set it in place, and I'm gonna put all the pressure down on this wrench and then put the Allen key in here too and start to tighten it down.
Now we've installed our rib nuts in the furthermost holes up front. We're gonna come back here to the second set and put this nylon sleeve right in there. I got a friend lifting up on that side of the bed. Make it easier for us just to drop this into place. You can completely remove it, but this was just easier. Once you drop the nylon sleeves in there, you can go ahead and come up back up here. Tighten these down. That way it's gonna help hold this down before we drop our bolts into here. Now I've already tightened those down. So what we're gonna do is come back to using these bolts with the washer on them. We're gonna drop them through those nylon sleeves we just put in. So just like that on both sides. And then we'll go underneath with the plate. Now underneath, you can see the two bolts right here. They're not super hard to get to. I'm right under here with a creeper. I'm gonna take this plate and put it right there and add a washer and a nut. And we're gonna do that on both sides. So I got the plate with one hand. You can push it up towards the frame. My buddy Tom's up there on top. He's holding the top side of the bolt. That way I can tighten this one down far easier. Or else it would just spin up there if somebody wasn't holding it. So let's get started with this ratchet. Again, I'll move my hand here in a second, but I want to get it started. You don't want that plate spinning around on you while you're tightening it down. You kind of got to hold that in place with your hand while you run the bolt down. And we already did the same thing on the other side. With those bolts tightened down, the installation is complete. It wasn't that bad. There was just a few parts like the drilling and the rib nuts, but overall I was impressed with this. I really like it, especially if you have a, comp a camper shell like this truck. It really helps you get access to those items that are gonna be more towards the front that you couldn't get to anyway. That generator being heavy and didn't like climbing up there to try and grab it. I could just slide out, grab it right here, pull it out and set it down. Well, I think that about does it. Thanks for hanging out. I hope this helped.